Okay, so I'm back today with Batacera and I'm going to show you how to get PlayStation 2 up and running. I'm going to go through the BIOS process, how to configure the PlayStation 2 emulator, which is PCSX2, in the best way possible, and also go through some video settings, so check this one out. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, if you've not yet checked out Batacera, you don't have it installed, check out my setup guide for that, which I uploaded a couple of weeks ago, and that will get you up and running. But for today, I'm going to go for the PS2 with you. So first of all, obviously boot up Batacera, and what you need to do is go to main menu. I'm pressing start on my PlayStation controller for this. I'm going to go to game settings, and I'm going to go to missing BIOS check. And what I do from here is just use my cursor on my laptop to scroll up. I find this a lot quicker than using my controller. So what we're doing is just looking for which BIOS Batacera requires to get our games up and running for this. So here's PS2 and as you can see there are seven BIOS files and they need to be named very specifically including capitals and lowercase otherwise this isn't going to work. So that's how you get to your BIOS files and what Batacera requires. And these BIOS files will cover the RetroArch course as well as the main PCSX2 emulator. So once you've got these BIOS files, what we're going to do is just back out of here, press F1, which is going to take us here. And this is where we can start dragging and dropping and putting our BIOS files and game files into place. So what I've done is created a folder on my external hard drive with these PS2 BIOS files in. And I'm going to just highlight all of these by right clicking and just highlighting everything. Right click, copy, and then I'm going to go to my BIOS folder in Batacera and just right click and paste. Next thing I'm going to do, I've only got one PS2 or a couple of PS2 games in my collection. So I've turned my Auto Modelista game into a .iso extension. And just bear in mind that Batacera accepts .chd2. So .chd is pretty much a .iso image, but a smaller version. So if you want to save some space, then I recommend converting to .chd extensions. So let's just right click on this one and we're going to copy. Now we're going to send this one to the ROMs folder and pop it into the PS2 folder and right click and paste. And that's all there is to it. So once we've done all this, what we're going to do is just back out of this. So file, close window, and we're back to Batacera. So from here, what I'm going to do is just go to main menu, game settings, update game list, yes. And there we go, we've now got PS2. But we need to set this up. So what we're going to do first is just go into PS2 and I'm going to download some cover art for this. So main menu, scraper and scrape now. And that's going to grab us some artwork and a preview video. And scrape and finish. So update game list. So if I go back into main menu, game settings and update game list. Really update game list. Yes. And here we go. So we've got a preview video and always good. So what we're going to do next is just go into view options. I'm pressing select on my controller for this. And I'm going to go to advanced system options. And I'm going to make some of your games into 16 by 9 widescreen ratio. So let's just remember that there's a lot of PS2 games which were designed for the old school 4 by 3 ratio. But we can force this through a combination of using advanced system options and the PCSX2 emulator itself to kind of force some of these games into 16 by 9 and just set it for those which do support 16 by 9 to make sure they are enabled. So we're going to go to advanced system options. Then we're going to go to display, game aspect ratio. And what I'm going to do is just go down to widescreen 16 by 9. And I'm going to back out of here and again and again. And I'm going to press F1 now to go back into the configuration screen. So from here, I'm going to go to Applications, and here we have the PCSX2 configuration. So double left click on this one. So once we're inside PCSX2, what we're going to do is go to Settings at the top. And from here, I'm going to go to Controllers. 
And from controllers, I'm going to go to controller port 1, DualShock 2. And at the top here, it should say DualShock 2. Now, once I've done that, we can now configure the controller. I'm using a PS3 controller for this. So my D-pad, I'm going to just configure this and correspond it with my PlayStation 3 controller that I've got hooked up with this. So just a simple process of going through each one of these and then just making sure everything's saved at the end. So obviously for PlayStation 2 games, you're gonna want a controller which can handle all of its buttons. And L3 just means to press down on your analog sticks. And once I've done this, I'm gonna just go to new profile tab at the bottom and I'm gonna just enter a name for this configuration that I just set up. So you can call that whatever you want, just press okay on it. And I'm gonna press yes on this. So once your controller is configured, I'm gonna to go to system and then start BIOS. And I'm gonna just finish up this 16 by nine ratio. And I'm gonna to go to system configuration and I'm going to press down to get the screen size and enter into this. And I'm going to go over to 16 by 9. And if I back out of this, so now that's set, I'm going to just exit out of this emulator by pressing Alt and F4 on my keyboard. So once you're back to PCSX2, and I apologize if this is a little bit blurry, we're going to go to System, Exit, and then we're going to exit out of here as well. So File and Close Window. So let's actually go inside our Auto Modelista game and see how this performs. So I've got no sound on this for this tutorial, but you should have sound on your side. And as you can see now, this is actually displaying in a 16 by 9 widescreen image. And here we go. So obviously we want to create a new memory card space. So yes, yes. So I'm going to show you this running and I'm then going to go into some detailed video settings to get these games looking really stunning. So obviously I've got the decorations enabled on the sides as we can see here. So some of this image is going to be actually cut off for this, but we're going to go through that process in a minute and disable this. So as we can see, Auto Modelista is running just fine. So obviously for PS2 games on Batasera, you're going to need some decent hardware to have games running at a decent spec. So just be aware that that lower end PCs aren't going to be able to do this. You might get the default settings like I've got here, but to enhance video on these games, then yeah, you're going to need some good hardware. So let's back out of this and that's going to take us back here. So let's look at these video settings. I'm going to go to view options advanced system options now emulators like i said at the start of this video you've got the main pcsx2 which is what we just configured and we've also got the retro watch core which is the retro pcsx2 so you've got two cores there they're both good as each other pretty much now if we go to video modes this is your opportunity to match Batacera PS2 with the screen output of whichever monitor you're using. I'm going to just leave this for auto because it picks up my maximum 1920 by 1080p. And if we go to decorations, I'm going to disable the decoration what we've seen because I want this in 16 by 9. So if I just select none on that one, and what I'm going to do next is back out, display, and from here, we can play with bilinear filtering. If we put this one to bilinear smooth, that's going to smooth out and apply almost like a filter to our game. So pixelation and jagged edges are going to gradually disappear if we put bilinear smooth on. And we also got a little option here to anti-blur. Uh, that's up to you if you want to do that option. V-Sync, I'm going to put on enabled. That's going to take away any screen tear. And what I'm going to do next is go down to Integer Scaling, and I'm going to enable this one. Now, if we go down to Rendering, uh, things like these options are really going to be wearing on your hardware, so just be assured that. Now, if some of your games don't boot, if we go under Graphics API and change over to a different driver, try Vulkan, uh, that could be a good way of booting up your games which don't boot. That's normally the main catalyst for this. 
rendering resolution, we can now boost this up to 4K if your computer supports it. I don't recommend going to 5K. I find games crash and they lag. So for this, I'm going to just boost it up to 1080p, which is still a massive improvement for PS2. Texture filtering, I'm going to put to bilinear PS2. And trilinear filtering, I'm going to put to trilinear PS2. Anastrophic filtering, this is another filter to make our games look a lot better. So again, if you've got the hardware to support this, then by all means go up to 16 times. I'm going to just go to two times for this tutorial. And right at the bottom, we've got FXAA. And this is an anti-aliasing option to improve visual quality of our games. So I'm going to just enable this one. So just be aware that with PS2 games, if you put a lot of these options on all together, then some games might lag. So it's really a case of trial and error on some of these games. So we've got all these options now set for video settings. Let's go back into the game itself. So let's open this up. And as we can see, the decorations have now gone and we're actually a 16 by 9 widescreen. And as we can see, we're now in full screen and this is looking really good. So I've applied anti-aliasing in jagged edges. I've now kind of disappeared, but of course you can bump those up uh, under settings. Like I say, if your computer has got some good hardware inside of it, then jagged edges can be improved even more with this. But even with the slight improvements that I've made, this game looks amazing. And yet there's no sounds. I disable sounds for Batacera for my setup guys. So that's it, and as you can see, this game really is looking really good for an old PS2 game. So let's just back out. So that's it for my PS2 Batacera setup guide today. So if you like what you see today, hit notifications so you don't miss upcoming content on Batacera. I also cover Retrobat, Launchbox, Retroarch, and several other front-end systems, as well as standalone emulators. So I'm on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. But until next time, stay retro.